All right, and welcome to your video lecture on the rock cycle. You're going to pull up your notes, whether they be your physical format or your editable digital format. Either is fine, but let's get these notes taken care of. Also, just a reminder, if you are doing your digital notes, make sure that you're putting them in a Google Drive folder somewhere we can easily find them to take your test because our notes aren't going to do us any good if we can't use them to study again or to reference on our tests and projects. So let's make sure those are in a safe space. Create a new Google Drive folder that says uh, rocks, perhaps. That's what we're studying for the next month. So we can put all of our stuff there. We're not doing vocabulary, and we're also not doing that. We are going to start on the rock cycle. It should be fun. So this is something I believe you learned in sixth grade. You talked about rocks. So we're going to pull some of our things from our memory boxes, perhaps relearn a couple of things, and then we'll keep going and see how the lithosphere is um, shaped, or how the lithosphere is modified over time on Earth and all that good stuff. Oh no, there is a bug. It'll be fine, it lives here too. Okay, so let's start with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are formed when we have magma or lava cooling. Igneous rocks can become crystallized, or they do crystallize, and depending on how quickly they cool will tell you the size of the crystal. So if I have a rock with really, really large crystals, then it cooled really slowly. If I have a rock with no crystals or very small crystals, like our obsidian right here, it cooled really, really quickly. Again, let's make sure we're filling in these arrows right here as well. We can transform one type of rock as a sedimentary down here, or metamorphic into igneous rocks by melting them. Igneous rocks look all kinds of different. We've got obsidian right here, which is pretty beautiful, and it's actually can be a, a gemstone if you cut it down really nicely. We've got um, pumice right here, and then we've got things like granite right here, which might be what your countertop is made out of. Each with different sizes right here. We The pumice is actually, doesn't have any crystals. Those are holes in it, like what you'd find if you like scrub your feet. You'd use a pumice, that's a type of igneous rock. And again, granite you would find on a countertop. Our next type of rock that we are studying is called a metamorphic rock. These are formed when existing rock is subject or put under very, very high heat and very, very high pressure. This takes place usually deep underground, close to that mantle. Uh, metamorphic rocks are typically striated, like our sedimentary rocks, but differently. They, they're, uh, they look layered, so you can sometimes confuse them with a sedimentary rock, but their layers are typically wavy, and they look a lot um, kind of melted together. That heat does that. We've got some types of metamorphic rock over here for you to look at. They all look different, and some of them are not as wavy as these. This is um, Nice, or Neith. I'm pretty sure it's Nice. We've got marble over here, also could be a type of countertop perhaps, and we have schist right here. All types of metamorphic rock. Again, the key here is that heat and pressure. So if I have an igneous rock and I put it under heat and pressure, it's going to become a metamorphic rock. If I have a sedimentary rock and I put it under heat and pressure, it's going to become a metamorphic rock. So memorize heat and pressure. And our last type of rock right here is called a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are created when sediments are compacted and cemented, which you don't see right here. But um, we'll go over that in a little bit. But they're created when our sediments are compacted and cemented. In order to get sediments, though, we need to weather or break apart other types of rocks. So it could be igneous or metamorphic. So they need to be weathered or sedimentary again. We'll talk about that in a second, though. They can be weathered and then they need to be eroded or moved from one place to another and they need to be deposited, put down in one spot. Then they need to undergo what we call cementation and compaction. Sedimentary rocks are often 
uh, have our fossils in them because the heat here in the igneous rock and the heat here in the metamorphic rock will actually destroy any organic matter. So the sedimentary rock is where we get most of our fossils if we're going to find them. Also to note, what was I going to say about fossils? Oh, the, if you remember from last year, the conditions for a fossil to form is basically no air. So any any condition that's going to lead to no air. So it could be like mud. It could be um, it could be mud. It could be getting stuck in between two rocks. It could be tar. It could be ice. But basically no air, so we can't decompose the organic matter. Fantastic. And then we're supposed to have some pictures. Oh, there we go. Of some of our sedimentary rocks. And they look kind of different. I'm not sure which one is which here. I simply don't remember. But these are our types of sedimentary rocks. So sometimes they can look like this where you've got all the different sediments just stuck together. You can see them really clearly. Sometimes it'll look like this where you can see the um, sediments and they're all different kinds of sizes. So this is very congruent. Same size of our sediments. This is not really. We've got large rocks, small rocks, all kinds of different stuff. And then sometimes it looks like this and this is actually shale. So you can see the different layers. You can even pick them apart as well. Now remember, before we can become a sedimentary rock, we've got to be sediments first. So we need to undergo weathering, which is the creation of smaller pieces of rock through physical or chemical means. We're going to study weathering in two days, so we'll learn a little bit more about that. But basically, I need to break, a, I need to break the rock apart. Then I need erosion, which is the moving of sediments from one place to another. So I need to pick up the sediments in one kind of way. Erosion typically happens with wind, water, or ice. So I need to move the things from one place to another. Then I need to deposit them, which is where the sediments stop moving. They drop, right? If we remember back to our hydrosphere, we talked about deposition and how we deposit, the rivers deposit sediment when they hit a larger body of water. Same type of deal, depositing, think drop. And then we need to have, we gotta see. <coughs> and then our rocks need to undergo compaction and cementation, which is where the sediments are squeezed and pretty much glued together to form our new rock or sedimentary rock. So they're not sedimentary rock until they've undergone the compaction and cementation. Very important things to know and remember. Oh, also those examples of rocks need to be written down in your notes as well. Um, the igneous ones were pumice, obsidian, granite, metamorphic, gneissus, marble, and schist, sedimentary shale, limestone, and conglomerate. Which, if I remember right, this is limestone, this is conglomerate, and this is shale. But, again, not entirely sure. And that is what we're doing today. So tomorrow we're going to be doing a lab. You're going to need... If you'd like to do the lab with us, like at home, I would love that. Here's what you need. You need starburst, scissors, piece of aluminum foil. We're going to be using um, the aluminum cupcake pans. A hot plate or a stove. Markers and colored pencils. A heavy book. And that's it. So if you'd like to do this with us, you're welcome to. The thing, though, if you're doing it with us and an adult's not around, you're not going to be doing the hot plate part. I don't want to encourage you or tell you to use a stove when your parents aren't around or a guardian or an adult isn't around. So we're not, I'm in no way, shape, or form telling you to do the igneous part. So you would skip this step right here and this step right here. So you would skip step four and five. If you want to do this lab with us, come around for our live Zoom at 10 o'clock, and I will walk you step by step through it. But again, you are skipping, if you're doing it at home, step four and five. All right. Have a great day, guys. Turn in your notes. Be ready to do your rock cycle lab tomorrow. Also, if you would just like to watch your classmates do it in class and get the answers from them or get their observations from them, you can do that too, but it's often fun to do it by your, uh, to do it along with us, to do the experiment along with us at home so that you're a little bit more engaged. Okay, have a great day, guys.